Rechargeable projectiles often tend to be some of the best attacks in Smash. They're safe, they're powerful, they start combos, they do basically everything you could want, and there's a lot of them in the game at this point. So chargeable projectile tier list. As usual with this tier list, we're only ranking the moves among themselves, meaning that the best are guaranteed to be an S and the worst are guaranteed to be an F. It's especially important to keep that in mind this time because some of these rankings are probably going to seem a bit harsh, but you need to understand that some of these moves might not be bad by the standards of all Smash moves, but they're competing with just some real, real premium stuff. Also, chargeable projectiles only. Let me be clear about that. No input projectiles, no projectiles with long startup times, only proper options charge and release states that also increase the power of the projectile when you do that. The moves are being judged in the context of their character's kits, and you may also notice that there are only special moves here. I was originally planning to include literally every single move that functions as a chargeable projectile, but the thing is, that started getting into a lot of really weird apples to oranges kind of comparisons. It's not like there's a shortage of them anyways, maybe someday, you know, the alternative projectiles tier list can be a thing or something along those lines. Alright, let's do it. <laughs> Let's begin with kind of the poster child for this type of move, Samus's Charge Shot, been around since the literal very first Smash game. This attack has always been good, but in Ultimate they really just brought it to another level. First off, it still kills just as effectively as it ever did, just a real strong move, but in Ultimate its combo potential was also ramped way up. It combos into her grab, combos into her back air, and because her tether grab is so fast in this game it makes the mid-range mix up between going for tether grab and going for charge shot so terrifying because shielding or not shielding can mean the difference between life and death either way. She now has kill throws too, by the way. And just as the cherry on top, they now allow Samus to charge her charge shot in midair, which she was never allowed to do before, which was admittedly weird and a good thing to fix, but my god does that make this move better. I don't think anyone is going to argue with Samus's charge shot going in S tier. This is one of the best moves in the game, period, at this point. I like... Look, this is an opinionated list, people are going to have their own ideas on these moves, and you're absolutely free to disagree with some of these placements, that's totally fine, but if you disagree with Charge Shot, I've just got to say you're objectively wrong, or as close to objectively wrong as you can be. It's so good. This obviously applies to Dark Samus too, by the way. I think, like, technically, it comes out very, very slightly lower to the ground, but... Whatever, it's the same thing. Might as well chuck me Gunner's Charge Blast in there. Uh, this one isn't nearly as powerful as Samus's Charge Shot, but it's still really powerful, packing a lot of kill power, and doesn't have nearly the same combo potential because me Gunner doesn't have a tether grab, but you still can get some combos off of it, kind of. The main question I'm asking myself is, are the differences between these two characters' kits enough to bump this down to A tier or to keep it in S tier? Yeah, you know what, I think this one is also going in S tier. This move is still just insane. Like, most characters would trade their neutral B for this. And may as well kind of top the Samus package off here. Zero Suit Samus's Paralyzer is really strong if you connect the fully charged version, because that means you can convert it into Boost Kick, or you can convert it into Forward Smash, or Neutral Air into Down B. The big problem with it is that you kind of have to be charging it up. It's not the hardest thing for Zero Suit Samus to do, especially because she actually has really, really good mobility, so retreating into charging it is an option for her. But you can't store the charge, and without some amount of charge it really doesn't do much for you. Good in tech chases as well which she can set up reasonably easily. I think this one's gonna go in B tier. Like it's really good in its niche but the best of these moves are so so good that if you exist in any kind of a niche at all I think it's kind of difficult to rise a lot higher than this. Diddy's peanut pop gun kind of a similar thing like it's useful in say ledge trapping situations and you can use it to call out some movement options and stuff like that but not only is it kind of a niche move as well, but also its payoff I'd say is significantly worse than Zero Suit Samus's most of the time. It's nice that you don't need to charge it to get some effectiveness out of it, but it's got almost the opposite problem. Really charging it more than a tiny bit does almost nothing for you. The full charge version is just a massive joke. It's never actually going to do anything, let's be honest. It's like a shield break punish and that's essentially it. Too situational, too unrewarding. I think this one will go in C tier, not F, because you do see Diddy's actually use this move. It's just kind of not the centerpiece of their kit by any means. Okay, I'm recording this after I wrapped on the initial session. Um, After sort of seeing how the entire tier list panned out, I actually think that Peanut Pop Gun is a bit more versatile and overall useful than the other moves that ended up in C tier. So I think I'm gonna sort of 
posthumously bump it up to B tier. It's not the most competitive B tier move, but I do think it's just a little bit too competitive for the slot I initially put it in. Let's get Sephiroth in here. I think this is some of the coolest looking moves in the game, if nothing else. His Mega Flare and Giga Flare, that's basically just a ledge trapping tool, except it's also a ledge trapping tool that you can always time around if you know the timing well enough. The exception being, I guess, if he has time to fully charge it up before you even get to the ledge, but that's really not going to happen all that much. Forcing specific getup timings can be really good, except this move takes so long to set up, and also Sephiroth is stuck in a fair bit of lag himself after using it. Even then, I'd honestly say maybe like F tilt and forward air mix-ups are better ledge trapping techniques. Kind of a two frame in there with maybe the middle charge as well, I guess, I don't know. The base version is a horrible neutral tool. Honestly, the main use you see Sephiroth's get out of this move is just turning around with it and cancelling the charge. It's great that you can cancel the charge, but again, you can't store it. I think this one's honestly gotta go in F tier. Once again, need to emphasize, the fact that it's in F tier does not mean it's one of the literal worst moves in the game, just one of the worst chargeable projectiles we're gonna be looking at today. It's got use, but that use is not very impressive compared to basically every other move on here. Shadow Flare, on the other hand, this thing is insane. This is an S-tier move. Getting this on your opponent in any capacity is really good. It means that for the next several seconds, they have to worry significantly more about every interaction. And obviously, this ramps up significantly if you connect the fully charged version. That payoff is really good, especially when you take into account its combo potential, but it's not nearly as high a payoff as the other S-tier moves in here so far. What bumps this one up into S-tier is just how spammable it is. Comes out very quick, has very good range, Sephiroth has the speed to make the most of it, and it's just incredibly low ending lag too. This is honestly one of the most infuriating projectiles in the game to deal with, which usually means it's a pretty good projectile. I'm kind of feeling the links. Let's do the links. Adult Link, the arrow's most notable use case, is probably the fact that you can set up into it after a bomb. On stage, it's fine. You do see Links use it like reasonably regularly, but I'd say it's pretty clearly the worst of his three projectiles. It does have that property where it turns into an item on the ground. How useful that actually is, I'm honestly not sure. An item is always a good thing to have in your hand, obviously though Link has the bomb, and you can do some kind of interesting setups with the arrow, but you don't really tend to see top Links do that a whole lot. That doesn't necessarily mean it's impractical, sometimes the sample size is just too small to really get a read on it from that sense, but I'd still say overall it's just a really niche application, and the same thing applies to the fact that you can tack it onto your bow for a double arrow shot. That does do a lot more damage, but damage isn't really this move's problem, it's much more just the application of it, veering a bit more towards niche, so I think it's gonna go in B tier. Toon Link's arrow is much slower, which is actually arguably a good thing because it allows you to chase your opponent behind them. Charging this one doesn't do much for you most of the time, it's really too slow to be a great edge guarding tool, although it can still force your opponent to burn their air dodge. That applies to pretty much any projectile in the game though. So I'd say its main use is as a neutral tool, and it's like it's not a bad neutral tool, but it's not incredible either. It's easily outclassed by both his bomb and his boomerang, so I think this one goes in B tier as well. Young Link, on the other hand. Yeah, I... Any objections? Lightning fast laser beam that completely dominates neutral and leads into kill confirms? No? Okay. More arrows. Pit and Dark Pit. I think quite highly of these moves. Does that mean I'm supposed to be compensating for the fact that I main Dark Pit? Like, am I thinking about this too hard? But ultimately, it's my list, and I think these are really good moves. Dark Pits is the better neutral tool, and I'd also say it's a much better edge guarding tool in the regions that it covers, because it sends your opponent at a much harsher angle, it does more damage, it travels faster. Pits, on the other hand, can obviously cover way more angles. You can hold the charge for a very long time too, which especially in Dark Pit's case can actually make these quite difficult to dodge off stage. Yeah, call me biased. Maybe I'm overcompensating, maybe I'm undercompensating, I don't know, I'm not trying to be biased, but I honestly think that these are both A-tier moves. These moves have some really, like, genuinely fantastic niche use, but they're also just really solid all-rounders that come out constantly. Given the choice between them, I'd say that Dark Pit has the slightly better arrows overall. They're not as fancy as Pits, but they're way more solid and dependable, but I am honestly not going to argue it too much, I think they're both really good. One more arrow to wind things down here with Byleth. This move is just way too slow. The fact that you can cancel the charge is nice and it allows you to maybe like be reverse your momentum in the air, but that's really its main use. It's kind of one of those moves that you just chuck towards your opponent because you have nothing better to do at that moment and hope that it kind of connects and it usually won't. Even MK Leo, like the literal best player in the world who uses Byleth in a way no one else on earth can even come close to matching, 
Even he doesn't really do anything impressive with Fail Not. The charged version is just ridiculously impractical. That's like a free for all move. Fail Not? More like Fail A Lot, am I right? <laughs> F tier. Do the Fire Emblem Brethren here. Corrin's Dragon Fang Shot has two components that you can charge separately. You've got the Shot and you've got the Bite. In Smash 4, this could be a really punishing move because the uncharged Shot could confirm into the charged Bite. In Ultimate, though, they took that away, which. <laughs> really hurt. Using the charge for any kind of serious projectile is essentially pointless. At most, it makes your opponent put their shield up for a moment, but like it's just so slow. Meanwhile, a raw charged shot into the bite is essentially limited to hard read status, and in a hard read situation, any move is good. The one saving grace that this move does have is that you can still combo the slightly charged shot into a charged fang, which is a fairly early kill confirm, although the percentage window that it works at is fairly specific, and in practice, I really don't know how much you actually see this come up. It's one of those kill confirms you hear about where it's like, yeah, this actually seems decent, but when you actually go look for Corrin players using it, you, you just don't find it. Sure, the sample size of top Corrin players may just not be that big, but I feel like if this was really that good, you would see it used more often than it actually is. I was kind of thinking C tier just because of that confirm. That's the only thing saving it from F tier, but honestly, I, I don't think that's enough. This one's going in F tier. Robin's Thunder, though. Now we're getting somewhere. You've got the Thunder... You've got the L Thunder, and you've got the Arc Thunder at various different charges, and all of them are really good projectiles. And then you've got Thoron, which is quite strong and also comes out surprisingly fast, so you can confirm into it, say, off of another item or something like that. Robin does have the ability to spawn items, but that's also kind of the problem here. He does that by using up his tomes, and one of them is the Thunder Tome. So this move does not come out whenever you want. Technically, the fact that it spawns an item does mean that it's a trade-off rather than a strict detriment, but overall, I'd still call it a net negative and a fairly significant one. If it didn't have that restriction at all, I honestly might be willing to put it in an S tier, but with it, it, like, it's not bad by any means. I think this one is going to go in A tier. If he even ran a little bit faster to, say, get more use out of Arc Thunder, that might also be enough to put it into S tier, but as is, I think it's a very good move with just a few too many flaws to really keep him out of the absolute upper echelon. Ness, and we'll throw Lucas in here too. I just talked about it in another video. Bottom line, it actually gets combos in this game, which it never could even come close to doing before, and it's got some reasonable uses in anti-air and juggling tool. I don't actually think this move is that good even now. I would put it in C tier, but compared to what it did in literally every previous Smash game, that's actually a huge move. Improvement. Lucas's PK Freeze. This is one of those moves that, like, I hear Lucas mains talk up a fair amount, but when I actually watch tournament footage, I, I just don't see it the same way. Obviously, it's designed as an edge guarding tool, and the main strength of the move is that if it does connect, it's really damaging. The thing is, though, it's just not that easy to connect with, and Lucas doesn't have any ability to provide follow-up pressure alongside it because it locks him in place while he's charging it up, so if your opponent has access to their air dodge, they should basically always be able to air dodge this, and in situations where they don't have it, you've got to sort of preemptively try and line it up. That's pretty specific timing, and I feel like setting up up B or down smash are usually more productive. If I watch the better Lucases, that's usually what they're doing. Of course, there are situations outside of this, and people do mess up some sometimes even in that situation, but is that enough? I guess I'll put it in B tier just because it is really devastating when it connects, but like, it's honestly really close. I kind of want to put this in C tier. You know what? No, there's no way. I'm just being a coward here. This is a C tier move. Like with Ness though, I think it does have some moderate use cases, whereas in like any previous game, it would easily be an F tier. Let's wrap up the Zelda squad. So we got Cheeks Needles and Zelda's Din's Fire and Zelda's Phantom. Cheeks Needles aren't nearly as devastating a neutral tool as they were in Smash 4, but they're still really good and not not that difficult to charge, and the mobility options you get out of them are really good as well. And on top of that, they've got way more confirms out of them than they've ever had before. Their ending leg is pretty low now, so they've got a ton of utility that you wouldn't initially expect, but does so much to improve her gameplay. So even though the needles are less straightforward to use than something like Charge Shot, I think they earn a nest tier spot. Easily one of the most utility-heavy, versatile projectiles in the game. Zelda's Din's Fire, you do see her use this mostly when she's offstage to kind of cover her way back and it does have some more use because of her phantom, she can kind of combine the two, but overall, not that good. The phantom, once again, does set up a little more pressure in that offstage situation than Lucas can generate, but is, is that enough? I, I don't really think so. This is a pretty niche move. It's admittedly got some reasonable niches, but 
if she got this swapped out with something else, she probably wouldn't be complaining about it too much. Cannot say the same for Phantom. This really is one of the centerpieces of her game plan. Sets up neutrals, sets up ledge traps, sets up combos. This is another of those moves that's been upgraded from something just horrible in Smash 4, but I think the peak that this one reached in comparison is way higher. I'm not sure if I can give it S tier. Zelda does have some mobility issues, which means that the setup time this requires can be a little bit hard to space around, and its range is short enough that if you don't have just complete stage control, your opponent can kind of run away and reset, and once again, mobility is an issue to chase after them, but it's really good. I think this one gets a very comfortable A tier, and if you wanted to put it in S, like, I wouldn't argue too heavily against it. I just think if you look at the moves that are actually up there, it's like, Phantom can't quite compete with them, but that by no means makes it bad. Rosalina's Luma Shot. This is an interesting one to try and evaluate. You can use it as a chargeable projectile, but that's not really the point of the move. Its main use is to detether and retether Luma, and obviously that's a pretty important thing for Rosalina to be doing. She's got a lot of different setups depending on how the Luma is positioned. So despite my best efforts, I am still kind of in that apples to oranges thing, right? Like, this move does basically nothing as an actual projectile, but it's also completely vital to the way she plays, so that kind of makes me want to put it in S tier just because the character doesn't really function without it, but I don't know if it's necessarily fair to rank it like that just because it's a core part of the character's mechanics. So I, I think A tier. So much of what Luma Shot is actually doing is setting up other moves to work better, but I don't know. This one's weird. Might as well get the other apples to oranges stuff out of the way. Hero's up B, and while we're at it, just include Hero as a whole. The up B, it does have some really cheesy ledge trap stuff, but other than that, it's a pretty mediocre recovery. Goes really far, but is extremely vulnerable and takes a lot of charge time, and it uses up mana, and that's kind of the big killer for a lot of these. Got a little bit of auto shield use too with the uncharged version. Not the best auto shield move in the game, but that's a good asset for a character to have regardless. I think we'll go C tier for this one. Not really the list of move like this belongs on, but I mean, I do have to include it. It is a projectile. You can pocket it and reflect it and do all that stuff with it. But for what we're working with, its main use is a recovery. Pretty bad, but it's got some other use cases outside of that, so okay, C tier. His other ones here, Frizz, Frizzle, Kafrizz, Zap, Zapple, Zap much better. The main thing is they still do take mana, which is a huge knock against them. Without that mana requirement, his fire spells would definitely be one of the best of this big chargeable ball style of move. The fully charged version is just ridiculously powerful, and the uncharged version is actually a much better combo starter than most of them, because he can also speed himself up to go along behind it. Meanwhile, the highest level charge on his side B is basically a gimmick. The armor is kind of nice, but really you're not going to see this used a whole lot. And the uncharged zap is not really that different than just a regular sword swipe, but the mid-range charge, Zapple, that one actually controls a lot of space really effectively and safely. So Zapple, even as a standalone move without the mana consumption, would probably be an A tier. With mana consumption, I'd say that knocks it down to B. Same thing with the fire spells. Without mana, S tier, that's why they're allowed to be so powerful. With mana, that's a pretty big cost to pay A tier. Still really good, but in practice, if you see the heroes with downtime to do something, they're usually going to be looking at their down B menu rather than charging up neutral B. Pokemon. Lucario, Mewtwo, Squirtle, any other Pokemon? Uh, Greninja. And because Mario is so similar, we'll, we'll chuck him in there too. Mewtwo, we'll, we'll just put him right in S tier to start things off. Easy choice. Extremely powerful, really large. They actually changed it in Ultimate so that it travels very slowly, which is a good thing because it allows Mewtwo to follow up and get combos off it. At full charge, you can actually hit the ledge with certain spacings, which forces your opponent to take action. The uncharged version is just an incredibly spammable neutral tool because it has very little ending leg or start up, and at really high percents, no charge or small charge can actually still lead into stuff. Lucario's Aura Sphere, at its best, this move is incredible, especially because it inherited that back hit that Mewtwo used to have, which turns it into a really staple combo move. Lucario's got fantastic air mobility too, which means that B-reversing this and wave bouncing it gets even trickier. The big catch, of course, is how much score I should dock for the Aura mechanic, because at low percents, Aura Sphere does essentially nothing. Thing. At really high percents, it's one of the most broken moves in the game, and I'd say even at moderate percents though, it's still a really good move. So I think this one still just barely worms its way into S tier. I'm debating between S and A tier for this one, but I think its peaks are just incredible. 
it's not useless for that long and at its average case it's still quite a good move. Greninja's Water Shuriken, the charged version of this move is somewhat niche because he can't actually hold the charge. It's not the most niche move in the world though, especially at the ledge, and he can also get some confirms out of it. The real highlight of this move I'd say is the uncharged version. It's not that rewarding to hit, but it's just such an effective, annoying neutral tool, especially when you factor in just the ridiculous mobility Greninja has to really abuse it. Gives you a bit of an air stall, which can be a really nice mix-up to combine with the other mix-ups he already has. I'd honestly give it a reasonable comparison to Pit. Like, it's a move that's got a couple of niche situations where it really shines, but you're never really unhappy to have it. It's such a solid move in a lot of circumstances, so because of that, I think it goes into A tier. Squirtle's Water Gun, Mario's Flood. Mario's Flood is slightly better, but they're pretty comparable moves. The most notorious aspects of these moves are recovery cheese. I don't know if that's the most impactful use for them, though in reality I'd say their best use is just forcing really awkward neutral interactions for your opponent. You force them out of neutral into disadvantage without much risk, or force them to the other side of the stage to let you regain stage control. Can be useful in zoning matchups. That matters a little more to Squirtle than Mario, because Mario obviously has the cape, but the other thing is walling matchups, like sword characters or Palutena's back air spam or something along those lines. Flood can really help you push in on those, or Water Gun, same thing. Flood, I think, slots comfortably into B tier. Squirtle's Water Gun, slightly worse move than Mario's Flood, but I don't know if that's enough to switch it up a tier, and because he doesn't have access to anything like Mario's cape, it's useful in more matchups, so he'll get a B tier as well. Let's do Rob here. I'll also make a note that Robobeam just barely, barely wormed its way onto this list. It is technically an optional charge because you can decide whether you shoot it before the automatic charge has reached full stage or not. That lack of control and the fact that it's not just super spammable are definitely issues, but the thing is, the uncharged version and the fully charged version are both really versatile, useful, straightforward projectiles in their own way, so I think this one goes in A tier. Not the Best kill move outside of edgeguarding situations, but it's another one of these tools where it's just like you're pretty much always happy to have it. Gyro, this is another one that's kind of weird to evaluate because most of what it does is just be an item. Yes, you can fire it at your opponent or even charge it and fire at your opponent. You see Rob mains do that, sure, but most of the time they've got it in their hand, that's what they're really going for. The thing is, once it's in your hand, it's a pretty bog standard item, but Rob can do a lot with a bog standard item. His kit is really well set up to abuse it, most notably side B. If you leave it on the stage though, it can be a pretty good ledge trap and also synergizes just so well with Rob's down tilt, so you can get some pretty nutty stuff with that. It feels kind of weird putting this one in S tier, but honestly, I don't really know where else I would put it. Those feel weirder. Bayonetta's Bullet Climax. This one does have some use in edge guarding situations, but it's another one of those ones where if you're on point, you should theoretically always be able to air dodge it. On stage, it's mostly just kind of annoying. You can crouch under it most of the time and it takes a lot of time to set up. Yeah, this isn't like a useless move, but even in Smash 4 when half her kit was busted, this still was a long way from a highlight. Bowser Jr.'s Cannonball. This move I honestly think is a little bit underrated. If you got the time to get one out, you can travel behind it and it really does force your opponent to dance because it applies a lot of shield pressure. Mecha Koopas can help set up some extra pressure too, but the big problem is that actually having the time to set the Cannonball up can be tricky. You need quite a bit of space, which is also kind of antithetical to the uncharged version's range, which is not great. and. Charging it up does give you way more range, but then it arguably makes the move worse because it travels faster so you have less time to pursue behind it. Yeah, I'm more optimistic about this move than I see some people say. I don't think it's total trash, but I also don't think it's nearly enough to be saved from F tier. I would probably actually rank it as one of the better F tiers if these tiers were ordered, which they're not, but it's just too finicky. Piranha Plant's Poison Breath. This is a ledge trapping tool, doesn't even cause flinch, but the thing is it does do a lot of damage like a lot a lot a lot of damage, which usually forces action from your opponent. Piranha Plant is very much a ledge trapping character, that's probably the biggest strength of the character, and Poison Breath is a pretty fundamental part of how that works. Can use it to hide in as well. Sometimes honestly you can even choose to ignore some of Piranha Plant's mix-ups and just take the cloud hit, like yeah you might eat 20 or 30 percent, but eating 20 or 30 percent to get out of disadvantage state can sometimes arguably be worth it. That's a pretty debatable point though and it's certainly not something you want to be doing constantly. Poison Breath is a move that basically does one thing and one thing only, but it is quite good at doing that, so I think it'll go in B tier. Ridley's Plasma Breath. This is another of these moves that you kind of step back and set up when you don't really have a lot else going on at the moment, but it does 
actually have a lot more effectiveness than some of those. If you catch your opponent at the right angle off stage, you can just straight up kill them. It can be pretty obnoxious to try and deal with at the ledge. In neutral, it's not a great tool because you do need a decent amount of space to set up, but it's got a couple of nice perks. It travels off platforms and it often beats out other projectiles and that includes trying to reflect plasma breath back at him. If you can get it off, you can combo into dash attack, which is really devastating. It does have that boss weak point thing where he takes a ton of damage if you hit him in the head while he's charging up. I, I don't know how much that actually matters. You don't really see it that much. Overall, I wouldn't say it's got like the strongest use cases of any projectile in the game, but they do exist and the payoff for landing this can be pretty substantial. So I think B tier. If I compare it to like Zelda's Din's Fire or Lucas's PK Freeze in C tier, one of its major use cases off stage is pretty similar. But even then, it's easier to connect, and its payoff is generally pretty good. And I'd also say it's got kind of broader use cases in general, so I don't think it belongs down there with them. Inkling Splat Bomb. You can charge this move up to throw it farther and do more damage. Its charge time is pretty slow, though. You do see Inkling players do it sometimes, but it's not that common. The main way you see this move used is the lobbed uncharged version, and the main function for that is as a ledge trapping tool. If it hits them, it also inks them. The main downside of the move, apart from that fairly niche major use case is that it takes up ink itself to throw. That's not the worst resource to try and refill though, it's nowhere near as bad as something like Robin's Tomes or Hero's Mana. So kind of another of these moves that really only does one thing but does it really really well and if your opponent's at the ledge there's very little reason ever not to be throwing a splat bomb at them so I think it'll go in B tier. We Fit Trainer's Sun Salutation. Very much in the vein of Samus's Charge Shot or Mewtwo's Shadow Ball but the damage output and kill power are significantly worse. It does heal you for a few percent when you fire it, which is interesting, but I don't think that's even close to worth the trade-off. And Deep Breathing also does power it up to make it really powerful, but that's just a condition that the other moves like it don't have. It does have some combo potential, but it's pretty specific. The projectile fires fairly fast, and Wii Fit Trainer has kind of weird stubby hitboxes, not great burst options. Like, it's a really good move, don't get me wrong. I just don't think it's nearly as good as the ones above it, so I think it's gonna go in A tier. I'd overall say it's like a kind of poor man's charge shot and charge shot is insane so that's not a bad thing to have by any means but i can't be putting it in the same tier as charge shot and ending on pac-man's bonus fruit one of the absolute most versatile moves in the game this may be the most versatile move in the game basic fruit works great to cover a variety of angles galaga for some ridiculous combos the bell for just absolute brain dead kill confirms the key for just brain dead easy kills no confirm required and i'm just scratching the absolute thinnest layer of the surface here. This move has so many ridiculous applications and so much synergy with other elements of Pac-Man's kit. Taking synergy into account, I'd easily consider this to be the best of these chargeable projectiles that you can hold the charge for, which obviously means it goes in S tier. Even in a vacuum, I called this the strongest out of any of them in my best of every Smash Ultimate move video on the main channel a few years back. Would I still say that? You're just gonna have to wait for the updated post-DLC version that I'm working on right now, but regardless, it's still just a phenomenal move, even on on a list full of phenomenal moves and easily one of the strongest of any of them. And with that done, there you go, the full chargeable projectile tier list. Thanks for watching everyone and hey, if you liked it, why not leave a like? Liking and commenting on a video improves how much YouTube shares it in the algorithm, so if you think this video deserves it, much appreciated. Top 10 best moves that used to suck above, channel update and AMA on my main channel below, and patrons, YouTube members, and Twitch subs get stuff like early videos and access to my Discord server. Later people!